Welcome to the latest edition of the Giants Hangout podcast presented by Crestron, a proud partner of the New York Giants. Our weekly roundtable discussion as we recap the previous game, also look ahead. And Happy New Year to everybody as we usher in 2024. Not the best ending for 2023 for the Giants, a heartbreaking loss to the Rams at MetLife Stadium. They fall by a point 26 to 25. So as we do each and every week, we'll focus on three themes, penalties, missed opportunities, explosive plays. Lance Meadow, Russ Salzburg, Howard Cross with you. Gentlemen, happy new year to all. Glad to have you aboard as we start a new chapter here of the Giants hangout. And Howard, I want to start with you because last week when we were talking about the Eagles game, interestingly, if you recall, we focused on the third downs and a lot of missed opportunities to continue drives. I think if you look at this week's game, you turn to, at least in my mind, those penalties because five of the seven came on the offensive side of the ball. They were against the offensive line as well as the tight ends. And they cut out so many big chunk plays, specifically in the fourth quarter, Howard. There were three penalties that wiped out 64 yards, including a 47-yard pass to Jalen Hyatt. And while I wouldn't point to one play in particular, I would say it was a cumulative effect over the course of the game. Well, yeah, the penalties were big. But I think you have to also take into consideration – that defensive line was playing pretty well. So they were doing all they can to, to keep them out. And, you know, if they don't hold them in a couple spots, uh, it looks like the play is coming back 64 yards, but it's it's, it's not the 64 yards that, that you're missing. It's the, it's the sacks that they didn't give up at that moment. They were just trying to protect the quarterback the best they could in those in those cases. And, you know, the, the, the calls were good calls. And like the, the, they were tackling them to the ground, almost trying to keep them from hitting the quarterback. No, and I'm with you because if you look at one of them, Daniel Bellinger had the – defensive player wrapped around his neck. So they were absolutely justified. I'm with you, Howard. And you got to look at it through that lens. It's just, I'm sure in the players' minds, though, they're playing a lot of the coulda, woulda, shoulda game that if the fundamentals were set and in the right manner executed, you know, maybe they walk away with at least one of those chunk plays to perhaps help finish a drive better. Yeah, I think, the, and I know what you're saying, but in, in the case of players, when you're trying to just survive against some guys, sometimes you're just holding on for dear life and hoping the ref doesn't call it. And that's what it looked like a couple times in those plays. <laughs> uh, those players definitely went for a ride. There's no doubt about it. And <laughs> Russ, it really was highlighted in the fourth quarter, as I mentioned, with three of them, but it wasn't just the penalties. You uh, have a missed extra point. You've got a missed field goal at the end of the game, a two-point conversion. Russ, I could sit here and give you a laundry list of all the things that went wrong. L l listen, Darren Waller said it best after the game. He said, um, exactly, wins just don't occur or fall in your lap. Exactly, and I'll tell you what else doesn't just fall or occur uh, in, in your lap. Catches, big plays. You know, we saw some big plays yesterday, but we also saw some big plays with drop passes. Listen, uh, w was the shot put pass on the two-point conversion from Tyra to, to Saquon perfect? No. But to me, I thought it was, okay, reach back. This is not just anybody. It's Saquon Barkley. Make a play. <laughs> there was a pass over the middle on that last drive. Saquon might have gone for a touchdown. I mean, I love the guys. My favorite player. Great play, players got to make plays. There, there was a play early in the game. We were talking about Jalen Hyatt. It was in his bread basket. It bounced off his gut. It would have been a, a big gainer from, from Tyrod. I, it might have been on a first series. Uh, you know, you can go through a bunch of them. You got to make plays. And to me, that's what I found frustrating yesterday was they just failed to make plays. It, th this is the NFL. Uh, Waller, who made that quote, there was one pass that that it wasn't easy, but this is the NFL. You you don't get to the NFL just to make an easy catch if you can get your fingertips on it. A lot of people say you got to make that play. I just there were a ton of failed opportunities. I'm not just putting this on the penalties. Did they help? Without question, they helped. They helped hurt the Giants, but just misplays. And and how about listen, Howard? I, I met, was mentioning to you, and I've asked you in the past. Why is there such a lack of tackling? You know, is it about training camp that ca they can't practice as, as much? And there you saw it rear its ugly head again yesterday on an 80-yard play. I mean, Adoree had his arms wrapped around a guy and make a play. 
and the big plays were not made yesterday. We, yeah, certain big plays were made, but others that could have been made or should have been made have, have weren't made. Let's put it that way. Well, I, I thought more of it was, you know, I know some, some drops and stuff, but I thought more of it was Tyrod Taylor, and and, and I love Tyrod, and I, I think he's a pro, and he, you know, said all the right things after the game, but he missed like two or three touchdown passes uh, over, you know, just putting the ball in the wrong place. And he, it, it, if it wasn't like a deep, deep ball, he just didn't hit them sometimes. And I and I couldn't understand it. And I know you're saying these guys got to make the plays so every time it comes to them. But for every drop that, you, that you're mentioning, there was a, a, a misplay going to the end zone or in the end zone that he wishes he could have back. So that's one problem. And the tackling goes back to what Lance has been saying the whole time. You know, this whole thing about the turnovers and how, how they're, you know, they're, it's a skill to punch the ball out. And I keep telling him how – it's really luck, and the guys should try to get them to the ground. And like maybe if there's four or five guys there, you can pull a guy down and try to pull the ball away. But that's what happens when you're trying to quote unquote rip the ball out. One player is trying to get down the field and get as many yards as possible. The other player is trying to like he thinks he has his hand on the ball and he's punching to pull it out, and you know it just doesn't work that way. Like when you're punching to pull it out, guys get you know ten yards, twenty yards in that case, eighty yards down the field. And you know you saw somebody come back and make a play where from behind. To punch a ball out, you're like, wow, that's what Lance is talking about. And then you see him on the sideline running down for 80 yards. You're like, yep, and that's also what Lance is talking about. It's just not a, it's not a guaranteed play. It's not a, a skill that you can acquire. It's, it's something that just has to be right place, right time kind of moment. And when you when you miss it, you, you don't. Re- he didn't really miss the tackle. He just didn't tackle him. Right. Yes. Yeah, 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 right. Yeah. And he that, had and his that, arms wrapped around him and yeah. just didn't tackle him. If he stops him right there, then that, you know, they probably don't go down and score. The defense is playing pretty decent outside of that play. But, you know, again, missed opportunities. These guys, it, it looked like to me you had one team that was playing, you know, for all they were worth. And one team that was like, okay, we're, we're, we're in it. And it, it wasn't like they were, weren't trying. It just like some plays that kind of looked a little too casual. And the casual plays hurt them. You know, Howard, and, I – Yeah, go ahead, Russ. I, I, Howard, I couldn't tell – you know, I'm sitting in the press box, but, you know, I, I was kind of wondering your vantage point from being down on the sideline. I thought I thought uh, Tyrod, a, a few of the, the sacks when he was sacked, I thought he might have been holding on to the ball a bit too long. I wasn't sure. What did it look like to you down on the sideline? Well, he wasn't getting sacked early. But once he had the two interceptions, he threw the two bad, had the two bad throws. Then he started to hold on to the ball because he didn't want to, you know, coaches telling him like, hey, man. You're just throwing the ball into, you know, to the classroom for everybody to grab. You got to, like, you know, get, get a better handle and make make sure you're not doing the wrong thing. And even at one point after the second interception, the entire crowd was screaming, bring back Tommy, you know, bring back Tommy. They were, like, screaming at him. So then, you know, the very next play, I believe he throws a 80-plus 80, 80 yard or two to uh, uh, Slayton. So you're hearing a lot of things going on in the stands. You're watching him. and You're listening to the coach, you know, trying to get him to – you know, you know, guys are right in front of him. He missed like, you know, guys right in front. He threw a ball on the sideline to Saquon. I think Saquon even missed it, but right in the middle of the field was was Waller. Like we just like, and he he's not under pressure. He just chose to throw the ball outside. I'm, I'm like, I don't know. Well, that was a play, I believe, if you're referring to, he was matched up with a pass rusher, actually, up the left side, Howard, and the pass went wide out of play. That could have actually been perhaps even a touchdown if it was on point. So another missed opportunity. What's amazing, you were referring to the explosive plays. The Giants, for the first time in franchise history, guys, had two touchdowns for 80-plus yards. And I know one came on special teams with Gunnar Olszewski, who did a great job forcing a few missed tackles, and then the one that Sladen had. And you would think, if you didn't watch anything else in this game, a team that has two touchdowns for 80-plus yards would, in all likelihood, walk away with a win. But then, what we were all just talking about, Huka Nakua gets an 80-yard play, which cancels out pretty much one of the Giants' explosive plays, and all of these other instances. and. I go back to, Howard, what I have brought up on previous games. The Giants had 13 possessions, 11 of those 13 possessions, because I know how much you love my statistics, so I made sure I calculated this extra special for you, okay? 11 of the 13 possessions, Howard, the Giants had at least one negative play. And what do we talk about? You lose yardage on first down. You lose yardage on second down. The sacks, the penalties. This team is not built, regardless of two explosive plays here or there, to overcome that consistently. And I think that truly reared its ugly head 
not just in one element of the game, but really over the entirety of the game. Yeah, they made a lot of mistakes. They, they, they just aren't consistent enough. Uh, you know, coaches doing the best he can to get them to be consistent, to be all these things. But unfortunately, when you're doing things, I hate to say momentum, but momentum flows in two directions. When one or two things break down, you know, there's always another thing that's breaking down for you. And it's really hard. It's kind of like driving a car that needs to be fixed. You, you're like, oh, I'll just fix this, but you need to fix the entire thing or it just won't work. So that's what I'm looking at with the team. And they, you know, when they're making plays, they're like, okay, we can do this. I can see the excitement in the guy's eyes. And when something goes wrong, you, you see a lot of heads hung down. You see shoulders slumped. They're like, man. So you, you don't want that look. You want guys, you know, patting each other on the back, encouraging each other and trying to get keep it and go. And, and I thought for a minute that they were going to kind of keep it going. But just another, you know, just another breakdown here or breakdown there. I, I was thinking about also like, you know, at the end of the game, when Tyrod comes down, he slides the next play. He can't take a sack. He has to throw the ball away. He, he doesn't even attempt to. He just like, you know, goes back, takes a sack, and they luckily get get it close enough to attempt a 50-plus yarder. But the kickers, it's not the normal kicker. Like we're down, what, two, three kickers. So you, you kind of get what you get, and you're hoping for a guy that's like he's in his 40s to try, if he can make a 50-plus yard kick and a win. That, that, that is to just so it says, since we're doing statistics, Howard, that's our fifth kicker. Our no, fifth okay. kicker. That, that's, a, that's a lot of kickers. That, that is yeah. a lot. And, and he's a, no offense, uh, Mason Crosby, a little long in the tooth as well. So, you know, you know. well, and also keep it, keep in mind, Russ, Cade York, who you're including in that yes. five, yeah, he didn't yeah. even kick. He didn't even kick at all this right. season. So it is five kickers, but only four actually got opportunities this season. That's how crazy it's been. Yeah, and, no, and wait till we play Philadelphia uh, this coming week, and he kicks the ball like he's kicking the ball. It's not getting in the end zone on the kickoffs. It's not getting close to the end zone. And they're, you know, it, you know, the Rams decided that they, that they were going to try to return it. But I think Philadelphia will be. We watch it and they're like, okay, so we got a chance to start on the plus, you know, plus thirty here. We we can get it out because sure. if it's coming down at ten yards, <laughs> they're going to start catching and trying to run it back. Yeah, now that. Know. Go ahead, Russ. Yeah. Oh, no, Lance, you brought up the negative, you know, plays. It, it just, listen, that's reared its ugly head far too many times this mm -hmm. entire season. You you just, you put yourself behind the eight ball immediately with those plays. And instead of, listen, second and, and second and eight is a heck of a lot better than second and 12. It just, mm -hmm. it really puts you in, in dire straits. You, you're, you're playing catch up from the get go. Well, and I want to focus on that. I'm glad you brought up the down and distance because this also goes back to what Howard said. On that last drive, and I know they have a marked line, about the 35 that they want to target to give Mason Crosby a chance. Now, I don't know what you guys thought, but that kick didn't really stand a chance with the win. So I don't know if an extra two yards would have made a difference, but I still think it's worth talking about. Tyrod Taylor gets 31 yards. He puts them within striking distance on the scramble. Then they spike the ball because they're out of timeouts. And then they run the draw play. And Saquon winds up losing two yards. He goes backwards. Now, they were asked a lot about this. Brian Dable, Tyrod Taylor. And they had mentioned, you know, that was the play call. This wasn't something that Tyrod checked out of. They figured, okay, let's not put the ball in harm's way and throw it here. Let's try to run it. But, I mean, the Rams read that beautifully. And then you get an incomplete pass to Wondell Robinson. Not to mention Saquon, Russ, this goes back to what you talked about earlier, Drop the pass earlier on the drive. And now we talk about the game of inches. I don't think it would have made a difference based on how the kick went, but two yards here, two yards there. Maybe Mason gets a little bit of an easier opportunity and who knows how things pan out on that final chance for him to kick the ball. Well, I, I, li listen, w when it happened, you know, and, and Dave said afterwards, I'm there at the press conference, you know, his post game and, you know, he liked to have it back, but you know, it, it's an old story. If it works, everybody's calling a, it was a great call. A and I sure. think he was just trying to get them set up and maybe have them thinking they're going to pass the ball and you're giving it the ball to Saquon. And I'll let's say he gets you, you know, something out of it. But he didn't. So now it's a bad play. That That's the feeling. Well, you know, I, you, just, you got to look at it like this, guys. He, he calls a draw. The draw it is a good call. The offensive line has to block it. I agree. All, all, all good, you know. You can say Tyrod, Saquon, whatever. The offensive line has blocked. You get one guy in the middle, you know, pinned to the side. He gets two yards. He may even get eight yards. But 
Well, you don't block anybody. The entire defense was in the backfield. Oh, nobody without a doubt. Yep. Yeah, so that's 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 what the play is. That's been that goes back to the to the crux of what's been happening the entire season. You know, the offensive line's been struggling, and that shows when when you, when you really need them to step up and just hey, look, just be on your guy. You know, and I think I think after all those holding penalties, they were like, well, we can't hold them, <laughs> and they just let them go. <laughs> so this, this is what it looked like. Yeah, because you yeah. can't lose ten yards in that. Yeah, You'll take exactly. two, Howard. You can't lose exactly. ten, or else you're not even attempting a field goal. Go ahead, Russ. No, 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 I'm glad Howard brought up that point because when it happened, I didn't go. Oh my gosh, how, how did he call a running play? I I thought, man, you know, if, if he busts that, you know, if you know, if ifs and buts were candies and nuts, every day would be Christmas. It doesn't yeah. work out that way. But I didn't. You know, people are making a big deal about it. I'm sure they're going to make a big deal about it the next time they speak to Saquon. Uh, not, excuse me, not Saquon, uh, Brian. But I just, I okay. It was a call that kind of made sense to me. It just didn't work. But and and, 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 not to you off. and, and, to, and to point out what I said, what I've said for the last three weeks, they got better. You know, the team got better as a whole. They, you know, they might miss a tackle here, a tackle there. You're disappointed at the end of the game. But the, the explosive plays that, you know, down the field, the, you know, the the defense finding a way to stop these guys when they had to stop them. You know, everything got better. A, a punt return for a touchdown. The special teams got better. They keep getting a few more plays better. It's the closing out of games now that they got to figure out. And, you know, they'll have one more chance to figure out the, the closing out part next week. You know, there was also a play um, we haven't mentioned yet. What was it? Third and, and 18, and Bellinger made a great, you know, rough, tough, mm -hmm. gutsy effort. Got back 17 and fourth and one. And, and you know, it was a right right across the middle to uh, Hyatt. He lost yardage on a play. Again, yep. it's negative yards. And it looked as if it looked as if Dave said on a sideline to him when he came over, like, what are you doing? It's fourth down. Like, go this way instead of well, he, that He kind of was coming back to the ball. On the, yes. To make sure the guy wasn't going to undercut him. But once he catches it, it you know, at that speed, I, I've never run that fast. So I couldn't tell you. <laughs> you you got to figure out how to put your foot in the ground and change direction. So yeah. I don't know if you can do that or not, but that, 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 that was what's happening. He, He's coming downhill a little bit to catch the ball. Once he catches the ball, they let him catch it also to make sure that he was going to go backwards. And yeah. that was one of two fourth and ones, by the way, because remember they had another one, Russ, where Tyrod couldn't handle the snap and they wound up turning it over on downs as well. And Howard was referencing the interception by Tyrod Taylor. I know it goes down as one turnover, which is legitimate. The Giants really turned the ball over three times because they had two turnover on downs where you thought maybe you'd get some points and then you had the legitimate turnover. And that's yet another group of missed opportunities that we could throw onto the fire with everything else that we're cooking up within this discussion. Yeah. I'll tell you, it's another game. I, I haven't been to too many games where I've seen, you know, they missed two where I've seen three missed extra points in one game and three missed extra points when the weather wasn't terrible, you know, like you've seen them in rain oh, and snow. Okay. It was it was windy, like. I, I, but in the pregame, I, I got a chance to watch them like warm up a little bit. They were having a hard time. The wind blows across the stadium from from the Giants side to the visitor side, and if you're not used to kicking in that, you it's, it's like you're hitting a slice or a duck hook or something. It, the ball was just like all over the place. And for those guys that like kind of hit the ball and they hit the little draw back into the to the middle of the net, that doesn't work in that wind. Any spin on the ball, it all goes. It goes really far left or right. So I was like, man, I said, if it comes down to a kick, it could get ugly. Well, that's why Crosby said that he believes he misjudged the wind, Howard, on that last kick, to your very point. And I think the wind shouldn't be overlooked because think about it. We had two kickers. Russ mentioned that Crosby's long in the tooth. I think that's well documented. He's a polished veteran, whereas Lucas Haversick, the Rams kicker, is a young guy just getting his feet wet in the league, yet both struggled with respect to the wind. So it just goes to show you, you could have 20 some odd years of experience. You could all of a sudden be green in terms of your track record in the NFL and you get similar results. So I think that played a role for both teams, but it adds up. And I think that's what, you know, Russ was getting at one point here, one point there, three points there. That's when, when you lose a game by a point, guys, we're putting all of these things under the microscope because once again, my key phrase is it's cumulative. 
You can't just point to one thing. You could point to about 15 to 17 things in a game like this. Well, I, I, I think, and I think Howard, listen, Howard's the one here who's the former player and played for a long time on good teams. It, you know, the good teams don't make, have these problems, okay? They, they, they need to be better. The Giants need to be better so they can be one of those good teams. There's been far too many. We, we talk about missed opportunities and, and negative play, negative yardage and all that. It's, it's happened far too long this season, and now we're approaching the final game of the season, and we're still seeing it happen. Well, like I like I keep telling you guys, like I didn't I didn't never say that they were a good team. I never I haven't seen them, you know, do something. I said it was going to be a tough season. If they got to seven wins, they'd be lucky uh, from the schedule and the teams they were playing because the competition had been ramped way up. They're coming down the last three or four games of the season. They're playing all teams that are trying to make playoff runs and playoff pushes and all this stuff. And I'm like, okay, so these guys will be playing their best. They have not the teams they've played against. I don't think they've played their best, and the Giants. Play, playing at the level they keep playing to keep the games close. I see improvement every week. I see better plays every week. I still see the bad plays. They can't overcome all the bad plays. They can't overcome one or two. If they have seven or eight, then it's just a tough game for them. But, again, improvement every week. I know Dable doesn't want to hear that. There are no moral victories, but there is improvement all around the field, and I'm 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 happy to see the improvement every week. Well, I, I will say uh... – Lance to Howard's credit, and he said this to us from the get-go, not to expect, you know, you know, the the win total to increase from last season. And you, you were right about it, but you know, in line to you know Howard's point, you know, the Giants aren't good enough to overcome as many bad plays yeah. as they make. Really mm -hmm. good teams can overcome those bad plays. But when you're not making so many good plays, those bad plays bite you on the you know where. And that's what's happened again to the Giants yesterday. Yeah. Well, and that's why – go ahead, Howard, if you want to jump in there. I was, I was going to say, and like, you, you got to look at things like missing Dante Banks. That was incredible that, that they were able to still kind of formulate some kind of secondary that, that could, could slow those two guys down. And they didn't stop them, but they slowed them down enough. That that was another positive thing I was looking at during during the game. And then – Tyree Phillips going out of the game late. I'm thinking, man, here we go. Here comes Pert. Pert came in and, you know, hung in there and did, you know, did the best he could. It, it wasn't like it was like a ginormous drop off, but he he came in and seeing Phillips run out of the, out of the tunnels and get back in the game was kind of cool because he was like, I'm ready to go. And I'm like, he was laying on the ground, rolling around. I didn't think he was going to make it. And he gets I, up and back in. I, I'll tell you what, when all the players came running out, you, everybody thought something was really bad wrong there. I mean, Oh, you know, at, I, the end, at the end, he, he, the second time he went down, yeah. he, was, he, yeah. went he was crying when he was leaving the field. Yeah. They, Terrible. They upset. Yeah. Yeah. Tyrod called over for the cart and the medical people immediately you saw. And it's a shame because to Howard's point, he got hurt with one knee earlier in the game. And then he winds up injuring the other knee later in the game. And Dable after the game seemed to think that it was pretty serious. We'll know more, obviously, yeah. in the week leading up to this Eagles game. But we're going to have another game of musical chairs, apparently, on the offensive line, not to make light of it, but that's been a big story. And really, I think what the two of you were touching on is the game against the Rams was a bit of a microcosm of the season where mm -hmm. you saw some flashes. And Howard, to your point, the last two weeks, they went toe to toe with the Eagles and the Rams, two playoff teams. They were with them every step of the way. But you don't get brownie points. You don't get style points in the NFL. This is not college football. Howard doesn't have to make a case for Alabama to get into the 14 playoff as we gear up for the semis. And Alabama made it. And Howard is on cloud nine, by the way, as a result of that. But he doesn't have to make a case for these NFL teams. So you got to finish. You got to be able to close the door. And the Giants, you know, had so many opportunities, but they didn't find ways to close that door. I mean, here's another example. You were talking about the injuries, Howard. I think we should highlight the play of Dane Belton. Okay, Jason Pinnock goes down. Belton is itching to get a chance all season. He has not played much. He played much more as a rookie. He gets three takeaways, gets two interceptions. He recovers a fumble, but the Giants only scored two field goals off of those three takeaways. And I always say, taking, a wall, taking away the ball is great, but it's all about what you do with it. So they didn't truly make the Rams pay because of two Stafford interceptions and then the lost ball by Demarcus Robinson. So there's another example of where you know, maybe you put the Rams in a more precarious spot where they got to press a little bit because they're playing catch up. That's another area that I would point to. I mean, I, I get what you're saying, but they haven't done it all year. 
Like I, I didn't expect them to like come out. I'm like, I said, if they get the ball, my my thought is just keep hold it for a little bit. Make sure that they that the defense gets a break when you, before you put them back out there. They haven't been able to score or, or put drives together uh, in a long time. Unless the play is like, you know, the plays of Slayton or something, they're just not having that kind of success. I, th- I thought Saquon ran the ball hard. Uh, it, it could be like he'd get a 10-yard run, an 8-yard run, a minus 2. A, a five yard run, a minus three. Like it, it was like hit or hit or miss. So again, guys, if they had some consistent play up front, the the season would have looked a lot different. Uh, a lot of these games would be a lot different. Uh, Daniel would probably be still be in the backfield at quarterback, but that's not how they played. They played they, every every week. It was like a struggle. Every week it's been how they're going to hold somebody up and how they're going to keep somebody out. Every week it's okay. What's what's going to happen? What shoe? What could bad could happen next? And, you know, this game, I think, was probably one of the better games because even though they had the penalties, they didn't have as many sacks. So you have you have a trade-off. Would you want to be second and second and five or second and 20? I mean, second I mean second and 15 or second and 20. So the, you get 15 with the sack, you get 20 with the penalties. So it's, it's you, you just got to you, you gotta kind of keep pulling for them. Like I said, keep to the, looking for some improvements, keep hoping that they're going to get a little bit better. You know, this game coming up this week is going to be – you know, with Phillips going out and Perk coming in, hopefully Perk can, you know, muster up some kind of ability to to, to block a little bit better than he's been, you know, he was before he got set, sent down for a little bit. You know, hopefully he can figure out a way to, you know, come back and, and play strong because they're going to need him to be be somebody that he's not right now. You, you, you know, you, you were just talking about some sacks, Howard, whether it's th- them or us, but really – um a sack is always a good thing for your defense, but, but I thought the Giants defense, especially in the second half, you know, there's one thing coming up with a sack, but it's, you know, I call them money sacks on third down or something. When you got to have them, they came up with them. I thought that was impressive yesterday. Yeah. Wink, Wink did a great job dialing up some, some great blisters. Cause you know, you see Bobby or getting two, two sacks. That, that's not part of the defense that we, that we see or the player that we see in the backfield getting sacks. And he got him in there two times for, for sacks. You saw, uh, the, I think Phillips got a sack. Uh, Simmons, Simmons, sack. Simmons got Simmons. a sack. Yeah, Simmons. Well, yeah. you know, you, that's what you're. You, you got to find ways when you're when your big guns aren't, aren't able to do it. And a big part of the, the reason why they're not able to do it consistently is Dexter is playing, but Dexter's playing like on a, on a pitch count. Like for most of the game, he's like he's over there cheering, and then when they need him in, they try to bring him in to to, to mix it up and put a little more extra pressure. But with that hamstring, which is not a hundred percent, he he can't go full speed. Jahad Ward also contributed with yeah. respect to the sacks. So you're right, the complimentary guys. The great thing about the Okereke sacks, and he actually had to split the second one, so he didn't officially get two. I'm not saying you're wrong, Howard. We just we want to be politically correct on this program so that <laughs> as a numbers guy, I have to represent the analytical people, okay, yeah. who study yeah. and fine-tune the NFL stats. Just wanted to make that clear. Nice. But as we move on, and I digress <laughs> back to the subject at hand, the beauty of the two Okereke sacks was the fact that he patiently waited. If you notice, he looped around. There was an alley that opened up, and that was because all the attention went to the big boys up front, Howard, that you were talking about. And Okereke looped around, and all of a sudden made Stafford have to run a little bit, and he was in position to bring him down. So I think that was well-crafted, to your point, by Wink Martindale. The only thing I will add is, and this goes back to what you want to take positively, and then all of a sudden what you give back, four touchdown drives for the Rams, they only faced one third down on all four of those drives. And that is not a good rate that could continue because to me, guys, that wipes out the four sacks that you got on Matthew Stafford. If you don't put them in enough third down situations on a handful of those other drives. Yeah, but you're playing against a quarterback that handles the blitz really well. He just got caught and fooled a couple of times. That's why he got those sacks. Like most of the time, it was like they're blitzing or they're coming. Even when they drop the zone, he's one of the quickest releases in, in the NFL. So when you're saying put him in a deficit, the fact that they got to him at all, like I think he's been, he was sacked one time a game over the last four or five games. The Giants got to him a few times so and, you know, hit him a lot. So I was like impressed with that. Just by itself, he's he's had one turnover. Uh, I think a, a game. Is well, been, he had none. He had none. Yeah. Howard. He had yeah. ten touchdowns and no interceptions in the entire month of December prior yeah, so to yesterday. In, in, yeah. in the previous four games, no picks. 
in the yeah, so, four games. So, he, so like you're 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 saying that to put them in a deficit, that they, they put them in a deficit. Like you you're you can't overlook the success that they had, even though they you know didn't make all their tackles supposed to, or even though he he they were running third down a lot. They put them in a deficit because look, they they got to him. They sacked him. They knocked him down. They got their hands on him. They got their hands on his on his passes. They did a great job at, at, as a defense. Uh, the, the offense just didn't quite put up enough points to, to get it done. And once again, complimentary football comes into play, which is another aspect that we've also been discussing throughout the entirety of the season. And the special teams touchdown, by the way, which I referenced earlier, guys, it's been, you got to go back to 2015 when Dwayne Harris was on the team, okay? Yeah. If you remember, he played the Jets in MetLife Stadium, got an 80-yard punt return, actually returned the kickoff that season, too, against Dallas. Mm -hmm. That's how long it's been since the Giants had a special teams return of any kind, okay? So you had a very rare occurrence, yet, once again, still was not enough to get the W. But Gunnar Olszewski, when that happened in the game, that was a huge momentum turner. The problem was, once again, it was a bit short-lived because when they got the ball back, they weren't able to make the Rams pay on that final drive. But you needed that. That was something that I think the Giants had been yearning for for quite some time. And this is why also they brought Gunnar onto the roster. They were having issues with injuries in their return men. They bring Gunnar Olszewski over, not at the beginning of the season, guys. He came in a few games in, and he's been a nice positive boost for this team based on what he's brought to the table. Extremely positive. You know, quite frankly, I, I mean, when he's back there, uh, when you say positive, I think he gives p the team confidence that something could happen. And I don't think uh, Giants fans – Anybody felt that way with anybody else being back there, him being back there, you feel something could happen yesterday. It did happen. Well, he, he was pressing a little bit because he had let that ball get over his head. Yeah. Over his head. His arm, yeah. Like, and he didn't run at first. That's not going to end zone. He had to run to get to it. And then he had the ball aside, you know, thankfully you had the big play to slate and right, you know, soon after that, but the, he, he was pressing after that. He wanted something good to happen because he felt like he had made a major mistake. And all these things add up, which is why we are breaking it all down with respect to the Giants' one-point loss to the Rams, 26-25. to But another game that came down to the wire for the second straight week, and now they'll get the Philadelphia Eagles for the second time in three weeks. And before we wrap up, guys, we have a 425 p.m. Eastern kickoff for both games because the Cowboys are going to be in Washington. And this is still a very meaningful game for Philly. So they're going to play all of their starters. Not that it matters at this point for the Giants from a mathematical standpoint because the Eagles lost to the Cardinals. So you can only imagine what they're going to be thinking coming into this game, but they don't control their own destiny anymore. The right. Cowboys, they control their own destiny with that loss. So if Dallas wins, Dallas wins the NFC East, the Eagles could walk away with a W and it won't make any difference. So it just goes to show you the reason I'm bringing this up is every single week, Notice the storylines change, the opportunities shift. That's how this league is defined. Competitive balance, parity. You could be the king one week, and you could all of a sudden be the joker the following week. Okay? That's how this revolving door of fun spins. <laughs> no, that's not, it's, it's not how it works, but I like that. That's funny. Well, I, well I'm glad you're chuckling <laughs> out of it. That's not how it works. Okay. Well, we're going to need another show for you to explain us the National Football League. Yes. It, it's called, you've, been, it's called, you've been watching the Eagles struggle all year. Winning, they're winning by one point here, one point there in the last few games. And then all of, the ball doesn't bounce their way. You're like, that's the way it goes. Like, no, they haven't been playing good all year. No, like, you're right. Absolutely. City, no, City they have not been a juggernaut. No, no, I'm yeah. with you. All I, all I meant was, Howard, what I was referring to is you could be atop the standings one week and look promising based on a win, and then you get a different matchup the following week, and things obviously drastically change. That was my main point. Yeah, well, we've been saying we've been saying you know other uh, when we've been talking about it amongst ourselves that they they haven't been playing sustainable football, and when it is just showing up at the end of the year. In, yeah. in particular, the last month, you're right about that. <laughs> this is not been sustainable. Yeah, nobody would have thunk it a month ago that boy they're going to be in this. Even if they win, they still might not. You know, when right. they had to, nobody was thinking about that a month ago. Yeah, you're right. Yeah. And that's why my favorite statistic, as I'm going to squeeze one more in for Howard, will probably remain still alive 
No one has won back-to-back -back NFC East titles since the Eagles did it four years in a row from 2001 to 2004. And that is remarkable. And that's why I brought up the spinning revolving door, Howard, because in the NFC East, it has spun, okay? Not even you can hang on and slow that down, okay? That has been well documented. With that being said, that is going to wrap up the latest edition of the Giants Hangout. It's presented by Crestron, a proud partner of the New York Giants. We want to wish all of our viewers and Giants fans a very happy and a healthy new year. We're going to have one more go around. We'll be back to recap the regular season finale against the Philadelphia Eagles and put a bow on the 2023 campaign. Lance Meadow, Russ Salzburg, Howard Cross with you. Stay locked to Giants.com, the mobile app, and your favorite podcast platform to check out the latest edition of the Giants Hangout. Have a good one.